All right. I got one hour. Come on. Preach it all. Preach it all. Preach it all. We have three services on Sunday, and the people come in the last service talking about preach it all. Now, they've slept half the morning. <laughs> preach it all. Okay, yeah, right. All right, let's go back. Let's go, hey, Matt, hey, Matt. Let's go back to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 2. This is where we started before. Deuteronomy chapter 2. And um, we started here at verse 24. Now, we're talking about facing the giants. Facing the giants. Let's see now. I set my, set my clock here. Let's see. <laughs> Glory to God. I just do like Brother Copeland does. I just touch it when it goes off. <laughs> but facing the giants. Uh, why am I even here in this topic? Because um, the church, one man said it, and I'm going to repeat what he said, that the church has been on the comfortable side of persecution long enough. Oh, I like that. Comfortable side of persecution. And um, <clears throat> the Bible says in 2 Timothy that all who live godly shall suffer persecution. Yeah. Yeah. All who live godly. And um, <clears throat> these giants were the ones that were on the promised land, on the, they were living in it. And these pro this land was for God's people. And the giants had it. And they were having a good time with it. And the 12 spies that were sent out, 10 of them came back with an evil report, as you know. And um, all the people got fearful, afraid. And there's only two people that, that made it into the promised land. That was Joshua and Caleb. And you know the story. But they brought back these big grapes, you know, to just build the desire of the people. This is, that was God's intent. God wants us to desire what he desires for us. In other words, to allow his desire to be our desire. And um, <clears throat> so what happened was they um, died in the wilderness and uh, they weren't supposed to, they were supposed to go into Canaan. So it's amazing how many people of God are dying without their promises. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. And I really want to be an agent to put an end to that. Put an end to that. Um, because these promises are for us and um, God wants us to have them. And it's even through those promises, um, the Bible talks about we escape the corruption that is in the world through lust, through pressure. And, um, but these promises are key for us. One man said this, if faith has no proof, it's a fake. I like that too. Because our faith should be doing something. You know, we, we just don't have faith to have faith. I mean, what are you gonna do with faith? Faith is given for a reason, you know? And um, one of the teachings that I learned way back when, when I first started, I think Charles Captain I was listening to, but he taught on the kingdom of God. And um, the kingdom of God is a new order of living by faith. You gotta live by faith to live in the kingdom. And and what happens is, and I went over that, I think last time, I think I'll cover some of this, 
But Jesus said over in John chapter 10, verse nine, he said, I am the door. And that's what I talked about last time. I'm the door. In other words, if you want to come in, I'm the door. Talks about one scripture. He talks about it's a narrow way. Describes a man who's loaded up, had to unload him and then bring him through the door and then load him back up. But he's the door. He's the one that we introduce people to. But I really didn't want to be introduced to Jesus until I saw what was in the pasture. Okay, all right. I see I'm gonna have to do some work here. <laughs> he said, he that entered in will be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So pasture, that's grazing, that's provision. So all the provision is back here. It's through the door. I'm not gonna camp at the door. I'm not gonna sleep in the door. I'm gonna go on in the house and find provision. And all these provisions are in the house, healing, deliverance, preservation, soundness, peace, joy, prosperity, uh, businesses, all this is in the house. And we gotta get this. Over in Revelation chapter 12, 12 chapter five and verse 12, he talks about it as the inheritance package. Over here, let me just uh, tune in here. Over in Revelation, what did I say? Chapter five and verse, uh, verse 12. He says, glory to God, I'll, I'll get it. I know you got it up there. He said this, a little, little wind blowing here. He says, uh, <laughs> verse 12, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. That's called an inheritance package. You know, like you go to a job and get a benefits package. This is it. This is your kingdom benefits package. Each one of those will preach. And so we, we got to get back here. We, we just can't come to a meeting like this and leave like we came. Come on. Yes, that's right. Look over here in Hebrews. <clears throat> I know I got you in Deuteronomy, but just you told me to, to flow. Amen, amen, amen. Look what he says here in verse 12. Hebrews chapter five, pardon me. And verse 12, well, when the, for the time we ought to be teachers, you have need of one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. Lord, hear me. But strong meat belongeth to those of full age, so forth and so on. But I want you to see that first verse there, verse 12. He said, look what he says. He says, for when, for the time that you ought to be teachers, you have need of one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. See? You had it, but because it wasn't used, now you slip back. Now I need somebody to teach you again. And that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, when you come to a meeting like this, all this word that's going forth in here. I mean, you, I remember when I was at, uh, going to school at seminary at ORU, and I remember I couldn't wait to get out of class because I would load up my car. There's my wife over, the stand up wife. Praise God, Sister Veronica, stand up so they can see. Amen. Amen. 30, 35, 30, 36, 30, 30 something years. And, and you know, when she would load me up in the car, she'd load up the chairs in the, in the trunk of the car. And 
She'd load up. I had a sound system that I'd purchased. She'd load that up, and I'd head for the north side of, of, of Tulsa. And that's where the housing, government housing project is, more the poor. And I'd set it up. There's always somebody that said, there was a lady that I knew, I said, can I run my cord through your window and, and, and have service? She'd, oh, yeah. And you could so, you know. And I'd get out there, preach like a house of fire. Now, <clears throat> I'm saying I'll tell people how good God is. And that God, now these people didn't have much of anything, but God is a good God. And so I remember one time I called for souls and the man came up. He had his arm in a sling and he had it wrapped up in a cast from, from, from the wrist down to the elbow. And I, uh, I prayed for him to be saved. And then I said to him, I said, now what's wrong with your arm? He said, my wife cut me. I said, okay. okay. I said, now, do you believe God can heal that? He said, well, yeah. And I said, okay, let me pray for you. Boom, started praying. Once I started praying for him, uh, he started moving his fingers. And his hand began to move on out, arm began to move out. He said, look at that, look at that. That's what he said. Now I'm, I'm, I'm praying, but I got, I'm watching and praying cause I, it, we out there, it was rough out there. And, and so, and so what happened was the gentleman that was assisting me just got saved two nights before. So it was, you know, he had alcoholism and a lot of stuff. And he was assisting me because I try to get somebody saved and then let them assist me. And so he assisted me. So he's on this side. The guy is on this side of me. And the guy is looking at his arm. And the guy on this side says, are you healed? He said, yeah. He said, well, shake my hand then and grab that thing and start pulling it like, I said, oh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> and the, the man held his hand. He said, look at that. I said, I said, God healed you. He went home, took all the stuff off of his arm, came back and had a little suture where the doctor had sewed up his arm, just left, just a little one, just like the holes that were left in Jesus' hands just a little suture right there. Everything else was completely healed up. And he said this, I'm gonna go home. I believe it's healed my back too. See, she had cut him in the back, in the back too. I said, brother, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you were able to get saved. But once they saw the pasture, they couldn't wait to know the, where the door was. Right. Show me the door. Yeah. And I was the same way. I was head over heels in debt. I was so deep in debt, I couldn't pay attention. And I, I, I had to call him my job and, and, you know, walking down the aisle at IBM like I'm, I'm you know, who'd have thought it and, and didn't have anything. I mean, broke, calling. They didn't have call ID at that time. So you just had to pick it up and take your chances. <laughs> And I got, I got on to him though. I started kind of disguising my voice. Yeah. Ha, ha, hello? He not here. Uh, but, but, but I'm hurting. And I hear Charles Capps talking about putting debts on a kitchen table and pointing at them. This is drawing me into the kingdom. Cause I got to see some demonstration. I, I've heard preachers, I'd heard preachers, didn't want to hear no more, but that's what happened to me. I said, well, uh, Charles Capps says, God is no respect of persons. Romans, I mean, uh, 
Acts chapter 10 verse 34. Peter said, I perceive God is no respect of person, but in every nation, he that heareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. So that means has the same access to his blessing. I said, if he'll do it for Charles Capps, Charles Capps said, he'll do it for me. Man, I couldn't wait to get them bills, put them on that tape. I said, Bills, I'm talking to you. Yeah. Yeah. Now you, you got to talk quick because they talk back. I said, you? <laughs> In the name of Jesus. I did that and started an out of debt flow. One year is totally out of debt. Owe no man nothing. We owe no man nothing from the time all the way to today. That's years. Buy everything cash, this cash. Why? Why? Because I got a hold of the pasture. See? And I declared that in my life, I'm going to live what I'm preaching. I'm going to live it. When I preach it, I'm going to preach it with the authority and I'm going to preach it with all the gusto because it is in my life. And it's going to be in yours. I said, today is going to be the last day you're going through what you're going through. All right, but let's, let's get in here now and see what the Lord has. So the supernatural is, should be natural to the believer. I mean, it should be the way, the thing that the education system is trying to do today is they're trying to, what I call, they're trying to um, uh, take, um, they're trying to take the spirit um, out of learning. They're, they're trying to make it so that you don't focus on the spirit, but it's all uh, soul and body. Yeah. You got what I'm saying? Yeah. So the way that Satan goes after doing that is take the Bible out. Yeah. Right. He's going to take the Bible out so you won't know anything about the spirit. That's right. yeah. And let me tell you, well, I'm telling you all kinds of things that happened since then. But one of our purposes for being here is to take dominion. Amen. Amen. That, including, that includes changing laws, yes. especially ungodly laws. Amen. That we're going to get Bibles back in school. Well, Reverend, we have them already in the, uh, in the Christian school. No, 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 no. The Bible says the whole earth Amen. is the Lord's, yes. not just Christian school. Amen. Amen. And what we got to do is we got to first wake up to identification, knowing who we are. Amen. Now, let me just start here and let's see, can we get somewhere with this? Because this, this, this is powerful stuff, folks. This is powerful stuff. I went down to Sri Lanka, uh, down in uh, just uh, south of uh, India, and we were preaching down there. Before I preach, I'm sitting there. They, they were kind of honoring me at that time and had a chair right there. It's, it's packed. I mean, they had service. At, 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 I said, what time does the service start? They said, 4 o'clock. I said, 4 o'clock p.m.? No, a.m. I said, a.m.? A.m.? See, I'm from America. A.m.? <laughs> And so, so I got there around seven, packed, all outside, packed, everything. So he came down down. So then uh, the bishop got up. He said, I want to just say a few words before we bring up uh, Dr. Winston coming up. He said that every Christian, now watch this. <laughs> every Christian. After being saved, within nine months, should be a millionaire. Watch this. 
Now I got a priest behind this. And watch what he said next. If they are not, there's something wrong with them or something wrong with their preacher. I said, okay, all right. Let's open our text. To, with God, all things are possible. You think about it. The first thing you have is the Holy Ghost. Yes. Say amen to this. Amen. The next thing you have is you are an ambassador. Right. You are sent from a wealthy family. Amen. Come on now, saints. Amen. And you could just add these things up. You've got what the world never had. There are things that are possible with God that are totally impossible with men. Now, I'm not just saying be a millionaire to be a millionaire, but my point to you is, is there's a lot you can do with some money. I better come over here. There is a lot you can do with some money. I don't know if you ever got on the battlefield, but you get this gospel out, cost some money. All right. Okay, let's look at this because there are some things I want to, want to share with you. Now, I'm going to finish on time, but don't rush me. <laughs> All right. Let's go to De Deuteronomy chapter two and verse 24. Rise ye up and take your journey. Pass over the river Arnon. Behold, I've given into thy hand Zion, the Amorite king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the hold of heaven, who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee. All right, let's go over to Acts, Acts chapter one and verse eight. Okay. Acts 1 and verse 8. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and in the othermost parts of the earth. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yes. All right. Power. Dunamis. Watch, put in your Bible, miracle working abilities. Amen. Miracle working abilities. Let's go over to John, uh, Romans, please, in Romans in chapter 5. <clears throat> Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Now, the Amplified says, reign as kings in life. A king functions by decree. A king functions by decree. Over in Revelation chapter 19, he said on his uh, thighs written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So a king functions by decree. A Lord functions by ownership. A Lord functions by ownership. You're kings and lords. Now, if I go on over, to Luke's gospel now, in Luke chapter 19. <clears throat> Over Luke chapter 19, he says here, starting at verse 12. And he said, therefore, he said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his 10 servants 
and delivered them 10 pounds. And he said unto them, what? Occupy till I come. Lord have mercy. Occupy till I come. I said, you can put in your Bible, advance and hold. Advance and hold. Now, what are we gonna be advancing? You're gonna be advancing the kingdom. You're gonna be advancing the kingdom. Remember what he said, the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but in righteousness, peace, and what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. Everybody's looking for the kingdom. I don't care what religion they are, they are looking for the kingdom of God. Every one of them. They want peace. Righteousness, they want joy. And in the kingdom of God are all the provisions that you and I would ever need until Jesus comes. Amen. Everything's in the kingdom. Now, what did he do with the kingdom? And we went to Luke, in Luke chapter 17, and look here at verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, lo here, lo there. Behold, the kingdom of God is where? In you, speaking prophetically, okay? He couldn't come in the disciples before they got born again. But once they got born again, the whole kingdom came inside of them. So, everything that you'll ever need, God has placed it in the kingdom. It is a commonwealth. The king put it there. And it's to take care of every need so when you go somewhere, you can't, don't have to live from the outside in. You were never designed to work for money. Amen. You were designed that money work for you. That's right. And so this kingdom is in you. Now, this is what I was told. This is what I was preached when I got born again. I didn't know anything but the kingdom. And so when I look back and I took the scriptures here, just if you'll just bear with me, Go back to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4. And over in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, here, I'll read here starting at verse 23. He said, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. Matthew, chapter 4. And verse 23. Let's go to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9. Over in Matthew, chapter 9, verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Let's go to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave unto them power against unclean spirits and to cast them out. Come on down here and start reading at verse seven. And when you, as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Watch this, heal the sick, cleanse the the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, now freely give. Now what is he demonstrating? The pasture. He's demonstrating what's in this kingdom. Let's go all the way over here to the book of Acts. Let's go all the way over here to the book of Acts chapter eight, if you will. Over in Acts chapter eight, here's Philip. He's going down here to Samaria to preach. 
And verse five, then Philip went down unto a certain city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Come on down because there was a sorcerer down there working. In verse 11, and to him that sorcerer, they had regard because that of a long time he had bewitched the people with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the what? Say it louder. And the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both, both men and women. And it goes on from there. Let's go over to Acts chapter 28, please. Acts chapter 28. Over in Acts chapter 28, he says here, I'll start reading at verse 30. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own house, hired house, pardon me, and received all that came unto him, preaching the what? Kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man what? Forbidding him. Everybody preach the kingdom. That's what people need to see. They need to see something in our lives that they desire to have. Man, I want that. I need peace with my house. I need my kids saved. I, I need, you know, I need my healing. I need this. I'm just saying. And so this is what we can't leave out because there is a demonstration that's needed. T.L. Osborne said this, when miracles ceased, people went to dead gods. So we got to bring the miracles back. Say amen to that. And we're going to do it in Jesus name. All right. Let's go now to uh, let's go and deal with a word called impartation. Impartation. Now, if you're with me, uh, let's go to um, Isaiah 30. Uh, let's uh, just, just a minute. Hold on, I want you to see this. This word is called impartation. <clears throat> I know I wrote it down. You know, I get up here sometimes and I try to, I get things, I know I wrote it, and then I get in the back and there it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Isaiah 34 and verse 16, please. All right, watch this. Now I'm taking my time. You, you're going you're gonna to shout at the end, but I'm taking my time right now. All right, look what he says. He says, seek out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall full, none shall want him, her. Wait a minute, let me put my glass just a minute. I got it, I got it. And read, and no one of these shall fall. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it has commanded, and his spirit it has gathered them. Now watch that last part. For my mouth it has commanded, and his spirit it has gathered them. Now, what does he mean by that? Put this down in your notes. God has a covenant way of bringing his people Glory to God, help me Holy Ghost. Come on now, I got to get this, come on. 
the name of Jesus. <clears throat> a supernatural covenant way of walking in dominion. That's what I want to say. He has a supernatural covenant way of walking in dominion. Now, let, look, look at what he, what he means. Now, I'm not going to go to the scriptures. I'm just going to tell you what it says. Ex Ezekiel 37. This is when there, were a val there was a valley of dry bones. So this, these bones were in this valley and God came to Ezekiel and said, son of man, can these bones live? Yep. And Ezekiel trying to cover himself, he said, you know, Lord. <laughs> and it says in verse four, and again, he said unto me, watch this, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Verse seven, so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together, bone to bone. Now, when I was in, in that church, when I was a kid, I remember you, they used to talk about, they used to sing a song called the neck bone connected to the hip bone or something like that. All right. Okay, just stay here. What is he saying? He is saying that a way for you to have dominion is through impartation, is through impartation. Now, Deuteronomy and chapter 34 says here in verse nine, and Joshua, the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom and Moses, because Moses had laid his, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. So here is Joshua taking over from Moses and Joshua was going to receive what Moses had by impartation. In other words, he didn't need to go through what Moses went through to get what Moses had. All he needed was an impartation. Are y'all with me here? Yeah. Yeah. Now this is key because what he's saying in Ezekiel and what he's saying in Isaiah is that the spirit is going to follow the word. So when I'm teaching you it's not just sound. It's a measure of prophetic word that has the same spirit with it that I'm preaching. Man, this is good here. I can listen to tapes or CDs. <laughs> the spirit of it is on it. Yes. You can read certain books and the spirit of the author yes. Come on. comes with the book. Now I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know that because this whole impartation piece is a piece that the people of God need to expect yes. yeah. that there be an impartation when these speakers are coming up to speak. 
Let's go over here to 1 Samuel and 1 Samuel chapter 22, please. Over in 1 Samuel chapter 22, look what he says here. And I'll start reading here at verse one. And David, uh, yeah, David thereof departed that so forth and so on. Verse two, and everyone that uh, was distressed, everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontent gathered themselves unto him and he became a captain over them. Now check it out. Here are these people with these three D's and they come and they're gathering to David. Now what has happened to David? David slayed a giant. Saul tried to hang his armor on him. And Saul said, you can't go up against this guy. He's been trained in war from his youth. David said, no problem. I killed the lion. I killed the bear. And I can take this guy as well. I like what one man said. David confessed five times what he's going to do to Goliath before he did it. Because you'll never rise any higher than you're willing to confess. So turn over to second Samuel and chapter 23, please. Over in second Samuel and chapter 23 and look at verse eight. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had, the Tecmonite that set in the seat chief among the captains. The same was Adino, the Isnite. He lifted up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. Now, wait, wait a minute. Where did they get that anointing from? This is the wrong crowd. Where, where did they get the anointing from? They got it from David. They got it from David. It was an impartation that, that when he was teaching them, the same anointing that was on him began to come on them. They could arrive at the kind of dominion that he had without going through what he went through. Let's keep going down here. Look here, amen. Look here at verse 15. And David longed and said, oh, that one would give me a drink of, of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. Now, it just so happened that between him and the well was the enemy. But three of his men broke through, got him a cup of water and gave it to him. Now, what did Jesus teach about a cup of water. Come on now, over in Matthew's gospel, chapter 10, you're gonna wake up. Matthew's gospel in chapter 10, look what he says here in verse 41. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's what? Reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive what? a righteous man reward. And whosoever shall give a drink unto one of these little ones, a, a cup of cold water only in the name of the disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Now I believe Jesus was also talking about serving the man of God that when you serve the man of God and part of how you can serve him is with helping him get the gospel around the world. That when you do that, part of the anointing 
that's on this ministry will now start coming on you. Now, let me give you a walking, living example. It's ish, B-W, me. I, as I sold into this ministry, the impartation that is on the man of God and woman of God of this ministry begin to come on my ministry. Are you following what I'm saying here? And I'm saying this thing works. I don't care who you are. It works. Why is God trying to do this? He's trying to get you into the supernatural so that you won't have to spend years trying to develop something that you can develop in one meeting. Glory to God. That some things can happen to you. All right. Look, look, look at, at uh, first Samuel, uh, second Samuel chapter 23. Come on down here. Come on down here to the bottom. He said, and Benaiah, the son, this is verse 20 now. Benaiah, the son of Jehua, Jehoada, something, praise God. <laughs> the, son, the son of a valiant man and Kibzeel, praise God, who had done many acts, watch this, he slew two uh, lion-like men of Moab. But watch this. He went down also and, and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. Now, who else slew a lion? Now, the same anointing that's on David is coming on those men. No, no, are you with me here? Yeah. Now, notice what he said. My people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. He's not talking about information. He's talking about revelation. Yeah. That they haven't been taught some things. Yeah. And I'm telling you now that if you go back and just look at the scriptures, look at 2 Kings when you get a chance. And look at the fact that Elisha served who? Yeah. Elijah. And he is about to go. He said, well, if you see me when I'm gone, I'll give it to you. He wanted a double portion. He didn't want just what was on that ministry. He wants twice of what's on that ministry. Come on now, come on. Stay with me. I'm talking about the church is a supernatural institution. Glory to God. God has made it so that you don't have to struggle anymore. This, this anointing that is on this ministry is available for every partner, every person that is on this ministry. The apostle Paul talked about it in Philippians chapter one, and he talked about that, that you are a partaker of, of my grace. Say amen to that. And all you got to do is believe it. See, you got to believe it for when you glory to God. Can I keep going here? Lord have mercy. It's so pleased I want to go. I love I shun now. I can feel something now. All right. Now I'm, I'm saying here that God has a covenant way for us to take dominion. He knows that the time is short. He knows that there is a way that, that you can get this anointing on your life that can shortcut trying to go through all the schools, trying to go through all the, the trials and error, but you can be like a Joshua and just have Moses lay hands on you. Or you can be like the mighty men and just let David teach you. And I'm saying right now, you better get ready because that anointing is going to come on you. All right, let's go to Luke's gospel and Luke chapter five, if you will. Over in Luke chapter five, this is the same principle that I'm about to tell you right now. In Luke chapter five here, and he said this, glory to God, and look at verse, hallelujah, yes, indeed. Luke chapter five, oh, it's Mark, come on, Luke. Luke chapter five and uh, verse, um, verse 17, all right? 
And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees, doctors of the law, sitting, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and, Jer and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was what? Present. Present to heal them. Now, notice what I said. The spirit is going to follow the word. That's right. All right. Say amen to that. Amen. And as I'm teaching right now, watch this. As I'm teaching right now, you can receive amen. a miracle of impartation yes. in your life you, right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. Woo, Lord. Let's go to First Chronicles chapter 29. First Chronicles chapter 29. Can y'all let me preach this? First Chronicles chapter 29. In First Chronicles chapter 29, he did this. <clears throat> he says, now watch this. <laughs> Verse four. He says, even, oh, no, 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 no. I want to start at, at verse four. I don't want to start. Da, 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 da. Okay, uh, let's start at verse three. Moreover, because I have my affection to, um, uh, to the house of, of my God, he said, I have in my own um, pr a proper good of gold and silver and so forth and so on. Now here's David. And he said, and even 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and 7,000 talents of, of silver. Um, uh, now, 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 this, this 3,000 talents of gold, let me, let me just stop right here for a minute. He's giving 3,000 talents of gold. Oh, Jesus, come on, come on, Holy Ghost, help me now with this here. Praise the Lord. I got to get this out. I get so high, I can't even see. All right, now, I'm telling you, you, you're trying to read. Now, now, here's what I want to show you. Look down here at verse seven. No, verse six. He said, then the chief, the ch then, the ch uh, the, yeah, yeah. then the chief of the fathers uh, and princes and of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and hundreds with the rulers of the king's word, work, pardon me, offered willingly, glory to God, and gave for the service of the house of God of gold 5,000 talents uh, of gold, 5,000 talents and 10,000 drams of silver and 10,000 talents and of brass. Now, uh, let me just say this. A talent is roughly, now don't, please, please, don't, don't look at my faults. Look at what I'm about to tell you, okay? All right. Yes, just look at what I'm about to tell you, because I know what I can do. All right. Five, don't have any faults. Thank you, brother. Look what it says here. It, it says, it, they gave, they gave, they gave, Lord have mercy. <laughs> They willingly gave, Lord have mercy, 5,000 talents. Now in my concordance, it said a talent is a, roughly a million dollars. That's in my concordance. I, I, didn't, I didn't ask you about your concordance. In my concordance, a talent is roughly a million dollars. Now if they got, gave 5,000 talents, somebody, Good in math, tell me what that is. What is it? Five billion. Now these boys matching David. How did they start out? Broke, busted, and disgusted. Am I right about that? How did they end up giving billions? Why? Because of impartation. 
You, you got, come on now, you got to see me. See what I'm saying? I'm saying because we weren't inside out minded, we were outside in mind. You can't get this outside in minded. This comes through the kingdom. This is a kingdom concept that if you sit in here through all these services, you should go out rich. You should go out healed. Come on. You should go out with peace. You should go out with ideas. Because that's the anointing that's on these people. Say amen to this. All right, let me keep going here. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, wait, that must be wrong. Five minutes. Nah, Lord. Okay, hold on. Are right, you with me? So, here's T.L. Osborne. He's at a meeting. He preaches. Then he's, don't, don't pay attention to that. I, I'm going by that clock right there. It's just, I'm running a little fast. Okay, now, He's preaching. When he's preaching, now he's going down to heal the sick. But he gets to the man who's been hauled in there on the gurney. And the man came in there because his foot had been crushed. And so they had a sheet over it. And when he came in, he had one foot that was sticking up under the sheet. And when T.L. Osborne got to him, Dr. Osborne got to him. He said, what can I do for you? He looked down at the sheet and two feet were sticking up. He said, Dr. Osborne, I think you've already done it. Why? Because the, the word carries the spirit. Okay, we'll get started. Right? So that's enough of that. You, you had to grab it yourself. All right. Now, next, identification. Say identification. identification. Come on over to Psalm chapter 82, please. Wow. That was tough to get out, man. I, 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 I'm trying to figure out why is this so tough getting out? All right, Psalm chapter 82. Let me know when you get there. Are you there? All right, look what he says. Starting verse one. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty and judgeth among the gods. All right. I heard again, way back when, one of the men of faith say this. If you read that and, and, and uh, 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 somebody could correct me if it's wrong, if it's wrong, I'm just going to still put it out there. I mean, you can correct it. You, I'm, I'm open to correction. He said, if you look at it in Hebrew, it's Elohim stand in the congregation of the Elohims and judges among the Elohims. Now, am, am, am I somewhere close here? All right. Now, why am I saying this? Because God made you like him. He's creator and you're creator. And what he does is he gives you things in a seed form. Now stay with me, stay with me. So here's the tree. Now he'll give you a tree. Now what you gonna do with it? Well, I can make a chair out of it. Well, I can get syrup out of it. I'm talking about all I can do with the tree. Because this whole idea of creation is the word fruitful. Fruitful means to produce. So this production that he's calling us to do is he wants us to produce something. I look and look at a definition of the word produce. Glory to God. And 
It means to bring forward. It means to exhibit to the to public. In other words, it means to make something come forth out of what he's given. Produce. Produce a witness. Something that is not there, bring it forth. So here's a tree, bring it forth. What is going to bring forth? A chair. Now I told you that the amount that's brought forth can be monetized in the fact they call it the gross national product. It's what a nation has produced with the resources that it has. Now, the only reason a person is poor is not because they don't have enough money or a job that pays much. The poverty comes, glory to God, when, when there's an absence of self-production. That's when it comes. When an absence of self-production, the, when, when, when God called the fish out of the sea, glory to God. He spoke to the sea, it, it's in the book here. The, the animals were formed from the soil, mm -hmm. from the earth. I'm, I'm saying he called something out of something. Yes. And, and what Satan does with oppression is he keeps you from seeing what's in it. That's right. yep. See, you, you, when, when we're oppressed, we can't create. I mean, what is a country that has, uh, I'm out of time. Um, let me, let me, give me, give me, give me eight more minutes here. What is a country that has more natural resources than hardly anywhere else in the world? What continent, what continent? Africa. I've been to some parts of Africa and it was just like it was back in the stone age or something. All right. Now I'm not downgrading Africa because some other parts of Africa got billionaires in it. My point to you is, what are you doing with what I'm giving you? Yes. Yeah. See, what are you doing with what I'm giving you? Because I'm going to give you some stuff. Now you have to produce something. And if anybody lacks wisdom, let them ask of God. So, Notice, I'm going to take what I've got and create something new. Bill Gates. Is he a billionaire? Notice what it followed. The money followed innovation. The money followed creativity. The money followed, I'm, 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 only, I'm saying something here now. Because George Washington Carver asked God, God, what is it? that what can I do with this peanut? And he led him and showed him how to make everything from face cream to children's crayons out of a peanut. Now I'm just saying, God has put something in your hands. And, 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 and we've got to get free enough so that we can create from what he's given us, Lord have mercy. The church should be the epicenter of invention. It, it should be the place where stuff, we've got a lady now, we had her come speak at our church. She went and got an old recipe. She was on welfare, got an old recipe. She found it from a great grandmama. She took that recipe and start making the syrup that was in there and now she's a multimillionaire. Products all over everywhere. Now I'm just saying, what is it around you 
that's ready for production. Lord have mercy. All right, all right, come on, come on, help me. Okay, I'm, I'm almost done, I'm almost done. Now, one of the things that'll help you is a sense of righteousness consciousness. Righteousness consciousness. Now, I'm saying that because when, when the, the, the thoughts of the righteous are right, meaning, all right, here, here, watch this, watch this. Lord, the people need, the people need a word, Lord. Now, this is me in Minneapolis when I was first starting to preach. I said, people need a word. I said, Lord, and then tears came to my eyes. Lord, it's Saturday night, Lord, and people need a word. Now, I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to move God. But how did he say, be, come before him? Come boldly. I said, he said his voice clearly. What are you doing? I said, well, I'm trying to get a word. He said, how do you come to me? See what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to ask amiss. I'm trying to ask outside and out of line with his word. Come on, are you with me here? Now, I'm, I'm trying to cover a lot. Help me, Holy Ghost. So I'm saying to you right now that a sense of inferiority and not being in the God class is difficult to hear what God wants to do through our lives. So what I have to do is I have to come back and I said, wait a minute, who, I, who am I? So I told you I was Superman, but now I know who I am. I am a God, a little G, not big G. And God has things, plans for me that are big plans that I can take this gospel all over the world. Now, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. So what do I do? God says something to me by that shopping mall. Now, I'm like Abraham in Genesis 15. Lord, I have no seed. See, this is what he said. He showed him, he said, I have no seed. So I said, Lord, how am I going to do this? He said, take Joshua 1.3. So I took Joshua 1.3, he said, meditate it. I began to meditate it. It not only opened up a shopping mall, Lord, stay, stay with me. It not only opened this thing up, I began to see it as mine. It also gave me the strategy to get it. Yes. Now the shopping mall was a giant, but my, the mall was in the hands of somebody else. But that wasn't where it was supposed to be. God said, I want you to have that shopping mall. Yes. Now notice how he took me beyond something I could do yes. into something that only he could do. Yes. And the way that he could do it through me is through faith. How does faith come? By hearing and hearing by what? The Word of God. So how about it's time for me to leave IBM? I tried three or four times to leave. Couldn't leave. Money was short. He said, I heard Jerry Savelle preach on seed time and harvest. I got the tape. Listen to it over and over, over. What it is doing is changing my thinking. It's putting a new vision in my heart. The next thing I know, I call my wife one day, say, baby, I'm leaving the company. She said, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> what did I do? I go in and tell my boss I'm leaving. Now understand the economy is down at that time. It would be foolish to leave, but when faith comes, it puts you under the influence. So now that faith is coming, I can see myself successful. I wasn't leaving IBM, I was sowing IBM. And now look at what God has. We're preaching to almost a billion people every week. Now, I'm saying to you right now, it doesn't make any difference because now I had an airplane that was due. Lord, what do I do? I need seed. A guy came and preached from Africa. He preached and he said, Pastor, your airplane is in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. What do you think I did? I went to Ecclesiastes 10. You better listen to me. I went to Ecclesiastes chapter 10 
and I read it, didn't see an airplane. Read it again, didn't see an airplane. Read it again, didn't see an airplane. Read it again, the eyes of my understanding got enlightened. I saw verse 20, a bird of the air shall carry your voice. Now, you don't have to have a dime. You, it already belongs to you. Only thing you need is a seed. And the seed is the Word of God. So I'm saying, I don't know what your condition is, but if you've got the kingdom in Luke's gospel, chapter 6 and verse 20, he told this poor woman, blessed are the poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. He wasn't saying you got to be poor and just live like this until you get to heaven. He is saying now that you're in the kingdom, you'll never be poor another day in your life. Now, how about Joseph Business School? God speaks to me. I want you to put up a business school that's going to teach my people entrepreneurship and make them wealthy to the point of Joseph controlling the economies of the world. I said, Lord, I need seed. He said, Isaiah 48, 17. He said, thus saith the Lord. He said, Lord, have mercy. Come on in Jesus' name. Man, it's tough to preach. Uh, he said this. He said, uh, uh, thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God that teacheth thee to profit, and I'll lead you by the way that you should go. Yeah. Now I'm saying that. I took it, took that verse, begin to say it. Now where did the school come from? It came from heaven. See, heaven is coming to earth, but it's coming inside of you. So as it came inside of me, now as I begin to decree it, it begins to come out of me and begins to manifest in the... Lord, have mercy. Say creation. Now I'm saying to you, look at the school now. It's in five continents of the world. I'm saying it's turning out. We're about to start a new class of six weeks to turn out millionaires in six weeks. See, if, if God, Lord have mercy, I'm, I don't care if you don't like me, I'm going to say what God said. He said to me that if we'll listen to the Holy Ghost, I said if we'll listen to him, he will teach you how to be a millionaire in a month. Boy, I've been struggling to get this out, but you're going to get this. I'm telling you right now that some of you in this meeting, I want you to get your expectation. God is about to do some things for you that you never thought could be done. We're about to see the biggest transfer of wealth that's ever hit. Folks, you should hear the testimony. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying every one of you, don't be jealous of me because there are haters out there. And when Joseph said what his vision was, they start hating on him. And the same thing with me. I thought I was cool. But when I was at Lake and Pulaski, that little storefront church, everybody loved Bill Winston. Then I moved to Forest Park, things started exploding. Then they say, uh-huh, he's all right. And then I moved to another place. Then I bought the shopping mall, and even the barbers start talking about me. Well, Reverend, I heard you're going to buy that shopping mall. Well, they knew that in that particular place, they didn't let no blacks own nothing like that. But they're in, listen, in the kingdom. I said, with the king. Let me tell you something. I don't care what color you are. If you believe God, God said, if he be for you, I'm just saying, look at it now. Hundreds of employees, look what he's doing, spitting out millions of dollars. I'm saying, look what he did. Not only that, I'm 
talking about what God can raise up through you. You see, he's going to use us to fix the legal system. He's going to use us to eradicate poverty. Say this with me. The kingdom of God God is in me right now. now. From this day forward, forward, I will be God inside minded. I will will decree a thing thing. and it shall be established. established. No longer longer will I play victimhood. victimhood. I am not a victim. victorious. Everything that comes my way, everything that belongs to me, I want it. And I want it now. Folks, I know I had a little rough start getting out there and this is not half of my message yet, but I'm saying this to you right now. I'm saying this as a man of God who is God has taught some things. I decree just like this man said, he said tomorrow about this time. I said tomorrow, come on. Now, let me tell you something. I have found that I got to watch because sometimes believers get jealous of believers. <laughs> They're unbelieving believers is what they are. And the next thing you know, they were all right as long as malls didn't manifest. Come on, as long as banks didn't manifest. It was against me on the bank, met with, met, met, pastors got together and met with me for the Fed to take the bank out of my hands. I'm telling you, why would you do that to your brother? Why would they do that to Joseph? I'm putting up a bank so that the church, when they get the wealth, will have somewhere to put it. Why put it back down in a place they're going to use it for gambling? Man, everybody should be behind those kind of ideas. So I'm saying to you, can you stand to be blessed? God is about to bless you beyond measure. I said beyond measure. I'm not talking about millionaires. I'm not. We passed that. I'm talking about billionaires in the body of Christ now. Are you open to receive new ideas? I release new creative ideas into this ministry on the partners of this ministry in the name of Jesus. Now shout about it and give the Lord a praise. And let me say one more thing. Let me say this. You black Christians, don't let this political system use you and tell you that you are a victim. You are not a victim. Come on, do you hear me? Don't go for that. All they want to do is put you on a government handout and have you begging again Your days of begging are over. You about to run this. Now I ain't scared to talk to you. I'm gonna talk to you right where it is. Cause I'm tired of these people of color, black and brown being used by politicians. You don't need another handout. You got the whole kingdom inside of you.
folks. I hear you. What the devil doesn't want is manifestation. Yes. He don't care how many times you come in here, shout, kick, kick over the church benches, all that cry and spit. He doesn't care about that. As a matter of fact, he's sitting up in here somewhere. And not, not in here, but he, sit, he tried to sit up in churches. My point to you is God has, whoo, Lord have mercy. I hear that today, Lord have mercy. He told me to tell it to him. Today is a turnaround in your life. Today, today is. Them giants have had your stuff long enough. I said today is going to be a turnaround. That everything the devil's been holding, he's about to make the wicked tremble. Now you decree a thing and call your stuff in to where it's supposed to be. He's about to take you to a fight you can't win. He's about to take you to a piece of property you can't afford. But Jesus has got your back. It's already paid for. you go. Now listen, I, I started out kind of rough here, but don't pay no attention to that. I came to you to prophesy to these bones. I came to tell you that tomorrow, about this same time, come on, one week, Up like that. Now pull it in. Oh. Now that's, that's yours right there. It's coming right now. Give God praise. Give Him thank you. God bless you. Woo. Come on, give Him praise. I, I got to hear some praise. This conference is not just any other conference. I, I said it. Do you hear me what I said here? There's an impartation taking place here. You're going to know stuff you don't know. 
and something's about to come to you that you won't know how it got there. One of the first things you can do when you go back home, put them debts on that table. Stand back off of them. Say, Bills, I'm talking to you. In the name of Jesus, be paid off. Dematerialize. Disappear. And in the name of Jesus, I am debt free. And with money in the bank. Now give God a praise and receive it. Oh, I feel like God wants to do something in this place here today, man. This thing is right for a miracle. Give him one more shout. 